it did. At first, I didn't have the mental strength because that's when uh, I first attempted suicide in hospital. Attempted suicide? Three times. He's a hustler, unbreakable, a people's person, and a future billionaire. This is The Hustler's Corner with Smoosiso Liope, well known to you and I as DJ Smoo. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm actually sitting with Beyonce's cousin. <laughs> I'm not with Solange, but I'm with uh, Beyonce's cousin from Africa, from South Africa. She's an entrepreneur, she's a fitness enthusiast. And she's got such an amazing, inspiring story. Welcome to the Hustlers Corner. I'm very excited. First up, let's go straight to the Shop Shop sign. On the count of one, two, three, we'll smash that like button. Click, 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 click. Thank you. Don't forget to click the subscription button so the family gets to grow. I have to appreciate you guys. I think we've done great this year. We've had a great year. And what excites me most also is that this episode is done by um, Stefan, uh, one of the people that actually was very instrumental in growing this podcast to be where it's at. So I always give shout outs to my brother, Justice, shout outs to my brother, Stefan, shout outs to my brother, Ria. But the most biggest shout outs goes out to our guest today. What I love about her is her story and what she's come from and what she, well, what she's had to go through. And I'm looking forward to actually hearing the story. Social media makes us um, think that we know people because we all follow, well, a lot of us follow each other online. I'm meeting her for the first time. And we're busy cuddling here. And it feels, it feels like I've known her for years. You know, I've been, I've been cuddling literally for like two hours before the podcast. I'm glad that we did that because it gave me a bit of an insight on what to talk about. Ladies and gentlemen, Beyonce's cousin. I'm kidding. Fitness bunny's cousin, entrepreneur, fitness enthusiast, and she also does a lot of influencer work. Smash and be sign. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm doing well. <laughs> good How are you? <laughs> I'm blessed. Finally, I'm good to have you on the podcast. I appreciate you. Thank you for making time with us, Bon. No, no, no. I'm very happy. You know, at first I was nervous. I was like, hmm. I, I'm just scared of speaking, you know. <laughs> Being a fitness bunny, that's the problem. All I can do is just lift. <laughs> L- lift weights, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you know. But yeah, for, yeah, and I'm just like, you know what, Smashley, just open up. And besides, it's you. I know with you, I can actually, I, I did trust you. I was like, I know, Guti, you're not going to be pressing buttons. That's no, I won't. I won't. I, I don't press people. I don't want people to be in their uncomfortable space. Yeah. I've been really blessed to have done so many interviews since since my well my entire career since radio days, um, but I also understand what you're saying. Abanda maning by our stuff on my podcast. What podcast? Hey, is it my Twitter? No, but our podcast is um, personal development podcast. It's positive. It's motivational. Oh, I need to check it out first. You know, type of thing. Yeah. But what I appreciate about you is um, that you are online. You understand the new generation. How people are maneuvering these online spaces and what i'm loving about what you've had to do is to tap into your own personal life and use it as a source of inspiration to inspire others out there and congratulations for doing that thank you yeah i think i think many years ago and then we're not in a hurry like where did you grow up where are you from who are you yeah actually yeah good one so Uspashim Pisane is Ukeli, or Kula Ikasi, you know, grew up Ikasi at Lamontville and also Lamont. Lamont. That's the, that is Lamont the case that right? Yes. Yeah. Lamontville, and from there, guys, you know, it was a change of size suburb. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I was in Pine Town in Umsanga, and I was just a girl who was so into fitness. I did basically every sport at ho- at school you know from your hockey water polo everything you know so that my parents can come see that girl you know into my high jump everything you know it was it was nice i think it was to please my parents so i could always invite them and they're always there which is beautiful and when i was in varsity um i was studying a degree construction well i started with architecture for one year past and then i decided no it's too hard i went to construction which was also hard um but then i got my degree and while i was studying though i was uh, obviously now you know once you're 19 your parents can't say you can't do abc yeah, <laughs> you can't yeah. go party and drink in peace <laughs> yeah. so uh, yeah. 
I was partying. So I was basically living a lifestyle that I only saw, you know, from a distance. So I was partying. I was going to gym. Well, I used to run first, but then I became very, very small. I was very skinny at the time. I was going to roll it. And then yes. at, at, at 19. I was, yeah, I was 19. I used to run every day before varsity. So, so you were skinny at 19 yes, while, was, while you was, used to be a runner? Yeah, I was okay. uh, even, you know, when you're so small that you have no bum. No one knows you even have a bum. Let's show up. I'm not sharing if I was blank. Yeah, and, you know, and then I happened to, well, with gym, I didn't know about gym. And either way, I didn't have a car. So I was just like, ah, it was a job. It sounded like a job. But I happened to meet someone there and he was training and uh, he inspired me to actually, you know, start training as well. Because I was like, I can do what you can do. So I went there, started lifting heavy. So I got addicted to weights, actually. So I started being um, so into fitness that I actually started gaining weight. Not because, because I stopped running. Running actually makes you lose a lot of weight. So I stopped running and I was just training. And then obviously with me getting bigger that's where my curves all came boom and everyone was like oh girl you know the small waist and the bootylicious and I was happy with that because at first I thought I was I was like oh I'm getting fat but I realized it wasn't fat so it was just my body yeah transformation and sorry sorry let me let me ask because a lot of people ask a lot of questions when it comes to gym yeah. I also do mm -hmm. sorry to disturb you was it intentional or do you get a little bit built if you're a thin person through supplements or just uh, so I don't understand I'm trying to figure out I, between you what you're saying running makes you lose a lot of weight but train I know that lifting obviously builds your muscles yeah. but how do you also gain weight and get curves and get no, a bar naturally for with me like what naturally um I've, my family we all have bums and hips you know and so when you are small, obviously all that fat is, I don't know, I'm just calling it fat. All that fat um, is not in display. But once you start gaining weight, then we see the buildup of your bum, of your hips, you know. And are you saying gaining weight or gaining muscle? No, I was, in, no, I was saying I was gaining weight because okay. obviously I stopped running. Running makes oh, you lose weight, okay. Boom, okay. you know. Okay. It does. So with me losing weight, I wasn't eating well at that time when I was, you know, we did like, ah, oh, Sebastian Fitness Bunny. I was eating all KFC, all Steers, you know, at Howard College, Kono Steers, KFC, they, that's all I ate, you know, and drank alcohol and I was just a normal person, but I ran 10 kilometers every day. That's why I was so small. As a student. Yeah, as a student. And then when I started training, I was still eating that. And then I think that was the, that's why I gained weight so quickly because I was eating, I wasn't running anymore. And I was still eating my KFC. I used to love guys, oh, KFC, your steers, oh, wimpy. You know, that was like, that was like, you know, your Uber Eats back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um, but now because I wasn't running, I just got bigger and I was, I used to be like, oh my God, I'm getting fat. But either way, I think it's because I wasn't used to having a bum and hips. So I was calling it fat. But it actually is who I am. And people loved what they saw. So I was like, okay. You know, uh, whenever I went out on the weekends, I'll be out there dancing. And they were like, whoo. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, all right. <laughs> So I just fell in love with the person I was. Aside from me falling in love with the person I was, um, everyone basically gave me the drugs to push more because I used to even post for them uh, how to train, how to eat, because I started now. But you already started your social media at the time. Yes. Okay. And okay. then, you know, but yeah, that was in 2016, I think, or 15, I'm not sure. And I was posting my workout videos because I used to love working out and my clubbing lifestyle. I was just posting out randomly, but people liked what they saw. Mm -hmm. And I just called myself Fitness Bunny because I felt like that's what I posted every day while I was at gym. Yeah. And yeah, so that's who Sbatle is, how Sbatle is known. I was just casually living my lifestyle and people liked what they saw. Lifestyle and fitness. A lot of the times we build businesses around things we're passionate about yeah. or things we're passionate about somehow they end up becoming our careers. I'm a DJ, 
Uh, you know, ended up being on radio, playing in clubs. And it led up to me being a business person, going on to TV, writing books, and blah, 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 blah. But it all started from music, what I loved, you know, what I still love till today. I always say, when we look at about Beyonce, you look at about Bonang, you look at about Black Coffee, you look at all these people, these things that they're doing now, it's nothing new. It's things they did when they were still teenagers and mm-hmm. they grew with them and they became these amazing, great people. Mm-hmm. And they were able though to turn their love into money somehow. Mm-hmm. How, how did you do that? How did you turn your love for fitness into money? Yeah, it was. Because I'm about some of fitness videos, yes, but some was, of them, they don't even know how to make money out of it or become brands themselves. How do you even, you know, turn yourself into a, becoming a brand? It was a challenge because for me at first, when before doing it, I think I was just freely inspiring everyone, motivating people to do ABC, and I was giving them information. Everything was done for free. I was doing it casually. Also, oh, it was intentional to fulfill quotas about. Yeah, it's like where okay. I'm just like, yeah, guys, so you can be like me. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah. was one of those things. You know? <laughs> yeah. Funny now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, I used to do it for free, you know, where it was just posting. I didn't know who to actually be someone of this. I was just posting what I like and saying to people that I used to, and I started hosting them for free. And it was my boot camps, which I hosted every week because I was, I was a student at the time. So every Wednesday for Women Crush Wednesday, I was hosting yeah. a boot camp after varsity because uh, it was in the afternoon. So it was after five o'clock, it was at six, so that people who work can join us. And I used to have like over 100 right. people who would come join. This is every Wednesday. Every Wednesday while I was in varsity, you know, no matter how stressed I am, I'm like, yeah. <sighs> Let me pack here. Yeah, I need to go. You know, so I yeah. think where it was fun, but some days, you know, it would be so stressful where I've got so many things to do, but I know that people are waiting for me. So I will pull up, we'll train, and I think brands just loved what they saw because everything I did, I didn't think there was, I could make anything from it. I was studying a construction degree. I knew I was going to be in the construction field with my mom. Yeah. I like that you knew what you wanted to be or you knew uh, the industry that you wanted to be in. Mm. Um, studying construction. Did you finish studying construction? I did. I got my degree in 2018 before my car accident. And, you know, with the car accident, I had memory loss. So I feel like my degree was just, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a waste because at the same time, I'm proud of myself that, you know, when I look at uh, my marks and... The fact that I even got the degree says a lot. That wasn't an easy degree. And I'm happy that I have a degree under my name. As much as I don't remember anything about it, I'm just like, at least I'll inspire my child to push. Congratulations. You (laughs) you you. attained your degree. (laughs) Yes. You're saying to me that you don't remember anything about it. What does that mean? Because I had amnesia. So with amnesia, I had full memory loss. And I've recovered um, a lot that I need to know. But clearly, that's one thing they just say slightly take a risk. You don't need to yeah. jump back into that field or well, into that lifestyle, wanting to be a con- be in the construction field. I understand. And, and um, either way, with my injury, I, I, I'm like, I don't see myself, <laughs> you know, doing well in the construction field. Why not? No, like I'm thinking, cause you know, my mom used to be always, and as kids, we're always there running with her. She was always up and down at the field and you have to go down, go up. And, I'm, and I remember when I was thinking at the time when I, I couldn't remember it in 2019, I was in my wheelchair. I was like, ah, my wheelchair won't help me here anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and I wouldn't want to be working at the office. I think I'm an active person. At least let me run around the field and be like, hey, ceiling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A great thing is that I was uh, blessed to have um, your mom in, uh, visit us at Massive Metro yeah. at the radio station. And I interviewed her. I think it was before COVID, 2017, 2018. Mm-hmm. Little did I know her story and you know what she did to start from the ground and build herself to become the person that she is. What an incredible story. Guys, if you have not checked out an interview that I did with um, 
the great, amazing Mamkiza. Go check it out on YouTube. DJ Subo Mamkiza interview. We did it at Massive Metro at our radio station. You'll be inspired. If you'd like to get some sort of inspiration and hear somebody who started from the bottom, somebody who had nothing, mm -hmm. somebody who had to pawn thing. You know the pawn shop? When you have to go to the pawn shop and pawn things. And sometimes they give, oh, guys, like a story. You know, sometimes we look at the flowers and the shiny things and the success and people don't actually know the story behind it. Every successful person has got a story to tell. So the fact that I've had that pleasure of interviewing your mother and I've had the pleasure of hearing the side of that story of how she, you know, she came up from nothing. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about construction. Clearly that, that was inspired by her. It was. That's why I wanted it first because she was, you know, in the construction field. I was like, no, mom, I want to be in architecture so you can hire me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I will design everything for you. And then I realized that being in architecture is not as easy as you think it is, you know, but I was inspired by her from even now, like, um, when I, I'm always telling her, I'm like, ah, what does that mean? I mean, and, but the thing is, I used to look up to her from how she even used to dress up before, you know, people say, how because before she was overweight compared to now she dresses differently but as an overweight person she used to she used to dress up very well you know she was always all glammed up and now that she's no longer overweight she's glamming up more than me i'm just like mm, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she'll be out there we're, we're putting bikinis she's also putting a bikini i'm like mother <laughs> take a seat <laughs> But yeah, she's inspired me so much and I'm still with her and we're still, you know, just vibing perfectly well. It's just beautiful to have someone you look up to and you're just like, I'll make you proud. Yeah. Yeah. Was that the plan? Uti will get it. I'll get you. You'll go and get a degree, graduate, and then Uzo Seben Zangapekaya, and this is what we're going to do, and this is how your future will look like. Uh it wasn't our plan. It okay. was my plan. Oh, it was your plan. <laughs> you chose to study construction. Yeah, no, I, I chose to. Oh, yeah, but I obviously inspired by her. Because that's what you always saw. Her last thought was just too beautiful. I was like, yeah, me too. I want this. But also at the same time, we, I didn't say I was going to work at home. But obviously, initially, my plan was, I just knew that, hey, listen, I will work at home. I just knew that I will work at home, you know. She can't even make me see you out of my... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but we, we would never know. But it's not like I spoke to... Uh, it's not like I spoke to my mom or spoke to my dad and said, that's the plan. But for me, I knew that I'm covered either way. So a lot of parents live their dreams through their children, things that they didn't achieve. Mm -hmm. And they force their kids to be that. But your parents did it differently. You know, they, they sort of inspired you to be the one that wants to go study construction, to be the one that wants to go do construction and be like moms. And then the accident happened. But let's not get onto the accident yet. Okay. I would like for us to, to get into that conversation. But before we do is, and maybe let me also respect the, the, the fact that you were saying you had, some, uh, you had memory loss. What did you think when you were gonna become? The memory loss actually was one thing that just made me not see a future. I didn't see a light at all because I realized that everything I worked so hard to be, you know, I worked so hard to be myself. And with me now having to be facing amnesia, amnesia yeah, is one hectic journey. But, um, it just made me give up on myself, on life. And I was like, there's no direction from here. You know, it was a sad journey, which um, people won't understand the journey, obviously, but it was a very, very sad journey that what I did today, I wouldn't remember tomorrow. But at least when it eventually started improving, I could go on by remembering a few things, you know? and having memory also of the past you know and because that's when i started believing that you know what there will be lights I will, I will regain memory of a b c and d except that i haven't regained memory of my degree that's the only thing i haven't regained i get you yeah yeah and and, and it's difficult for me to ask you about the accident because mina 
I'm not like abanya bata bata ndi ndaba zava ndu kakulu, you know. But I just want the inspiration and the positives, and even if some of them are negative, of people's stories to come out to inspire the audience. But and, and feel free to not share what you don't want to share. Don't worry. Yeah, and I hope I'm not gonna get you emotional. Me? Oh, no, no, no. Trust me. It's something I've relived. I've cried too many times and I've told my story actually to a lot of people privately to a point where I just, I don't actually, it's not an emotional story anymore. I think it's my recovery that I take to that level. But in relation to my car accident, it happens to all of us almost every day. So. Okay. But before the accident happened, you had a for some reason you under you ended up getting into a high profile i call it a high profile relationship because you got into a relationship with a soccer star who was not just a soccer star it was a national <laughs> soccer star and it was a superstar and you got into you know you became you became a you know a celebrity somehow how did you how how, how did that change your life somehow and you having to maneuver that and and you know what i mean you like because uh, honestly because now you I'm, didn't I'm, have... I'm happy you asked me all these cameras now these I'm, cameras I'm like, <laughs> I'm like laughing but i'm happy you know that you're asking because i was just a normal girl who lived a normal lifestyle but now when i started dating him you know i realized that i can't post the things i used to post i have to be mindful of what i'm posting because obviously people comment and you know, even when you got to a point, it was, it was, you know, you, you couldn't even like break up in peace or do anything in peace because it's not like our relationship was just only me and him, you know, it's, we know that people are watching. So we have to be mindful of everything we do, you know, we must laugh like this, cry like this, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, it, but at least, you know, being in that field, taught me how to actually uh, work with people, to handle people, how to communicate and how to even, you know, reserve myself more from sharing my private life, you know. So it's not like before when I first um, had Instagram and I was just sharing things randomly. But once I was with him, I realized that I can't share things as freely. And that's the person I am today. So at least he taught me something. Yeah. You're not a fleshy person. No. You're not in is that intentional? Maybe you are behind cameras, we don't know. Never know. <laughs> the life that you live behind the scenes. But it's like you like ever like the, your entire social media and just I don't think I've ever seen you uh, it was uh well I've never i I've, I've, I've I don't think I've ever seen you in any type of fleshy and sometimes I don't want to sound You've like flesh is bad. In, in our lemma, in a Ferrari. Luxurious. Yeah, everything. <laughs> you grew up in all of it, right? Yeah. A life that a lot of us, when we grew up in Luxury, we would like to have. You grew up in it. You yeah. grew up with the best cars, you know, the best houses. And I think. I, I didn't want to ask that. Like, maybe just my. So, see, I go to private school, you know, those things. How was it? You just look cool and rich. Maybe it's because it's luggage. You just look cool and rich in a respectful way. No, okay. <laughs> How do I answer this? But if we summarize it, and you know, it's it's like in lifestyle because I know in my head race, you show people are like, oh my god, and like, which is understandable because they're seeing a side they didn't know of me and my family, you know. But um, at the same time, what everyone is looking at was as good as Apollo to us. You know, it was not something as because we grew up like this. This was always our lifestyle. So, in J, yeah, if I know an Apollo, when I only do with oh, let me get you know, the lifestyle was just so normal. There was, we like we didn't see what people saw in it, and the fact that I never flashed about it is because I don't know. I think because it was just too normal. Yeah. Yeah. But still today, you're not flashy. Yeah, but still today. But either way, yeah, I, I, personally, I'm not a, fl a flashy person because. Even now, like I drive mom, uh, my mom's cars, and with me driving her car, you won't find me posting myself driving the car. Or are you driving even today? Yes. What car are you driving? <laughs> no, no, no. My car, my car. Oh, today you're driving your no, car. No, 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 no. You say I've got my car. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, okay. But in your shoes, Ma still allows me to drive her car. So yeah. You know? <laughs> with my moon boots. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my mom calls me for a clapping and she's like, Spatle, 
don't drink and drive. I'm like, mom, why do I drink when I'm driving your car? And either way, it's out of respect, you know, it's not a whole thing where, you know, I could drink and drive, you know, we all know how to drink and drive, but I would not disrespect my mom to that level of where she gives me a car, trusting that obviously I wouldn't do wrong or wrong turn next thing. Here's mm-hmm. actually drinking and driving, even if I get home without me getting in a car accident, but the fact that I was drinking and driving, that's disrespectful. So, you know, one thing about me, and yeah, I was just saying, my child must just know one thing, Uguti, don't disrespect your parents. So I've never done that. I'm, I'm safe in that department. When yeah. they say, don't jola until you are 19, that's what I did. Yeah. So now, it was weird when, I was like, so you said when I'm 19. <laughs> <laughs> you said when I'm 19, freely. And then the high profile relationship <laughs> happens, and then you're in the media, and then you're in papers. And then people are talking about you in gossip places and blogs. You're now, mm-hmm. you know, and it, break, it brings a lot of attention. How did you handle that, though? Uh, I actually, as, mu- as much as the world that you grew up in, obviously, I'm yeah. sure it's sort of I think you were sort I, of used to attention. But no, I think because it's the thing is, it's um, how you your sp- your perspective and everything. Uguti, abandu yazuguti. Whether you're doing good or bad, they will always have something to say. So uguti uti ningami, anshanga nixala malasto continues. You know. So would how people, any negative thing that was said about me, I was never touched, you know? And with every good thing that's said about me, I'm like, oh, you know, so, oh, you know, like I get happy. But also with my interaction, when I see uh, my people live, I'm always, you know, taking pictures with them, greeting them, treating them normally because of the name. I am who I am today because of them. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be where I am today. You know, so I do respect them and we respect each other. I've never had a uh, situation where I'm like having to frown or anything, you know. So I've never had any of the bad situations. I think everyone, we all just respect each other. I get so, yeah. you. Uh, and, and, then, and, and then I woke up one morning and then I get into social media. It was as if you're my sister and please I made fool. I, I saw you, uh, your beautiful car in an accident. In I think a lot of people visit home to like, you know. Yeah. And then people, and then we find out, okay, at least you're alive, etc. What happened there? You can only talk about if you want, whatever what you want to talk with? about. I'm talking How, about now we're with, getting into the accident. Okay, so what happened is in... What uh, happened with the accident and... No, with the accident... Um, if you remember, whatever you remember and whatever you think... I remember, I even remember my last word. It's just that I wouldn't say it because people will be like, see Bashley. See Bashley. No, uh, so... Um, it was my friends and I was three cars. We were all driving. And... Um, the one friend was ahead of us and then me and my one friend we were close to each other but then my friend distracted me so um, and as I was trying to protect myself I happened to knock the side of the road which made me bang my head I passed out and clearly me hitting the robots got him to focus and stop his car and if it wasn't for him stopping his car I wouldn't have made it because he's the one who actually called the friend in front of us who, was, who, was, who, who has left us, told the friend that this is the situation and the way the people actually communicated with my family, called my family and things were put together. I went to, you know, hospital, was in my coma and yeah. You know coma for how long? For a month. For a month? Mm. Sure. What does that mean for a person like me who's from a little bit? So we should see you in a coma. I mean, I have a coma. I have a coma. I understand what the coma is special. But does that mean you can't be not aware for a month what's going on? Or what, what does that you mean? You have sweet dreams for a month. Sure. Sweet dreams. So, yeah. I was, yeah, I had an, I was somewhere. I was, I was living actually. Because when I woke up, I, 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 I still thought I was going where I was, <laughs> but oh, you realize because you know you stuck <laughs> So yeah. Uh, and then you're telling me about memory loss and a lot of the things that you've had to then go through. Some of the thing, new things that you've had to start learning. Now your eyes are opened. This is after the accident. You're in a coma. You've been in a coma for a month. We have fog. Mm-hmm. Your life now has changed. It's no longer that old life before the accident. Take me through yeah, it. Yeah, eh? it was. 
I just couldn't like having to wake up every day and realize that okay, this is me now is something I just wasn't open to. You know, I was like, no ways. How am I gonna do A, B, and C? And you know, it was even before I started being comfortable with clubbing. I'm like, how am I gonna club? Because I love clubs. You know, I'm just like. You were young. I mean. Yes, I'm like. I'm not gonna ask how old you are. I'm 25. You're, you're, you're 25. 25. I'm yeah. like, uh, uh-uh, uh. There's no ways I'm gonna see this life only via Instagram. So. Either way, I just decided to go team. Let me just go party in my wheelchair. So <laughs> at that time, when I decided to, I had to be like, "So, mom, mom, I can't be using this wheelchair. You need to get me an automatic one." So, my got me the one where you just press one button and it goes. <laughs> but it going uphill or downhill. My life was too smooth. So again, I think my wheelchair changed my life because I was literally it was as good as a car. Okay. You know, so okay. I could I could freely move without. And besides, it like. I felt safe because it was just so big, and I felt like, come forward and so, can you Because you know the speed, everything. It was actually it felt like it was my shield, yeah. so I was happy. And like my wheelchair was my safe spot. Uh, but with the whole lifestyle of knowing Gucci, you don't have an ankle bone, and knowing that you have these scars. So I will never be able to wear shorts because obviously if I'm wearing shorts or anything, anyone walking past me already in my wheelchair, people used to like randomly stop and be like, oh my God, those metals, what happened? I'm like, now imagine with these big scars, what people are going to be saying and whatnot. So I was against everything with the scars. My face, surprisingly, all the scars, I didn't do any surgery, nothing. All the scars just disappeared naturally. I was like, clearly I was drinking enough water. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, we'll our minds. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and eat vegetables, yes. yes. They all cleared nicely, so at least my face um recovered and I could freely continue smiling. But with my body, I wasn't happy with the scars and the fact that I had no ankle bone and that my body was also still kind of sensitive at the time. So it was not something nice to wake up to, you know, when I woke up from a coma and I'm looking at myself, I was just happy to go back into that coma. Yeah. Mm. And how was life after that? Um, maybe you, you, and I'm still, I'm still, I still want to talk about memory loss. Were you aware of your high profile relationship before then? Were you aware of your life before then? Were you aware of the people that were visiting you in the hospital? Um, or you regained? Yeah, because with hospital, Some memories, you, you know, went. hospital, uh, everything was because of memory loss. So I couldn't have a lot of people. Because if I see you today, I won't remember that you came to visit me today. You know, sure. <laughs> it was that bad. So Amazing. it was private. So it was only uh, very few family members who could come. You know, because they had to make sure that at least I get to remember the space. You know, and I did. I eventually did to a point where I'll say, "Yeah, when are you coming?" You know, I was relaxed, okay, but. Okay. In relation to whose who Spatle was, I didn't remember, but my friends, they used to show me my Instagram, tell me what you're doing, show me pictures. And I used to be laughing in hospital. I'm like, ah, can't wait, I'm coming back. <laughs> so then you scroll down and That's you just cool, yeah. and I, was, I would oh. look at I would look at that, it looked beautiful. And I was like, hmm, mm. yeah, boy, yeah. You know, you know those things where you, even when you're seeing all the things where you partake in those short dresses and heels, I'm like, girl. I'm coming back. So now when I left hospital and I realized that sharks, I can't wear my heels. I can't do anything. I'm like, wow. You know, so. The strength though, because it takes mental strength to come back. It did. At first I didn't have the mental strength because that's when uh, I first attempted suicide in hospital. You attempted suicide? Three times. And then... I realized to go to you know what when when the third time was too well planned and i say okay dear god you know you just like tired now i'm like ah oh, again you know <laughs> and then i realized that's okay you know as people say you survived to a purpose now and i said let me just actually give myself up to god and believe what he will give me direction and i'm happy i did that because yeah. wow wow sure First thing, the first thing I tested him with, I was like, I'm getting in this car. I left my wheelchair, yeah. jumped in the car, I drove, came back home safely. My mom was about to cry, but at least I got back home safely. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, I'm telling my mom, like, no, he was with me. I drove all the way to the mall, <laughs> all the way to the mall, just didn't know how to park, but 
I came back home, you know? So it's like small, simple things like that to where you look at, they make you happy. Things you didn't think you could possibly do again. Cause I had two cars and the one was written off. But with my other car, I felt like it's a waste. The fact that it's sitting there, I'm not driving it. So the fact that I could drive it again, I was like, wow, I didn't think this was possible, but hey, look at me, I'm driving mm. it now. So I just never posted again, how you're saying is how I'm private. I'm not public about my things. I drove the whole of 2019, I just never posted it. People only saw my wheelchair, but I was driving okay. freely. I would okay. even drive, go to the club. Recovering, and, right? Yeah, you yeah. know, while I was recovering, just that obviously, you can't drink and drive number one because a wheelchair is as good as a car yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you can't drink and drive yeah and, and then i also want to talk about uh, be, before we continue and, and and the reason i'm talking about this because i know there's a lot of our audiences also that are dealing with their own yes their own situations the, the suicidal part when you're in a hospital and you suicidal and you're alone i mean i want you to take me through that process because at some point i think and this is before camera you're saying and, and it hurt me. But at some point, I think you're trying to hang yourself. Yeah, that I was in hospital, and still today, I always, I, like, I don't have. I probably you help me because with how to define that. Both my legs were broken and my arms were broken, but I managed to get out of bed to go. I didn't walk. I got out. There's a wheelchair. Next to it. I jumped into the wheelchair because the wheelchair used to used to take me to the toilet. Yeah. Jumped into the wheelchair. I rolled all the way because I had my own room in the in the hospital, so yeah, I had enough space to plan. And then I stood up, put up the rope, everything, and my nurse happened to walk walk in as I just hung myself. You know when it's, it's just meant to start saying ee, ee, like I, I don't I, know I, I, and I don't even wanna know. <laughs> no, yeah, I should go to the part. Imagine like the pain where I'm starting. I don't like, even I'm, wanna imagine no, it. Like, I'm, I was meant to be feeling the pain. I didn't even oh, get to feel the pain because when she walked in So you'd just, already done it. I, she walked in as I just hung myself and now with her opening the door, I didn't even feel anything. We would see there was something strengthening me because I was disappointed at her coming in. You see, this was me. Why? <laughs> but either way, I was bruised. But um, and then I got chained from there because they realized that, yeah, her two broken uh, legs and arms are not as helpful, you know, to keep her in bed. But either way, I think because every day in hospital I was sitting there, looking at how the doctor has to inject me. I don't know how many times, and I need to do these treatments and what. So it was actually just mentally draining. I was against it. And I always used to communicate to God, actually, while I was in hospital, saying, why? Because I was like, why would it save me to come live this lifestyle? Because it's a thing where we actually don't appreciate surviving because now the survival is actually like it's, it's like it was, like I felt like at that time, I felt like if I just, you know, didn't make it that day, at least it was going to just be a few seconds of me, boom, boom. And my car was even burning, so you know everything was going to be done quickly instead of me having to live years where I have to recover, where I have to even learn how to walk again and everything. It wasn't pleasant, and it made me want to just end my life over and over again. But I kept surviving, and with me surviving, I realized that you know what, actually, maybe my purpose. Because when they say "spatly, you're here for a purpose," I was like, "I where's the lottery number?" <laughs> and you didn't understand because you. I didn't understand. Right? Yes, and then. I was like, you know what, maybe I'm just here to live life and show people who would see it's possible. There's a way actually to live when you are in this condition. Cause, and how I found that out is because um, how I was telling you earlier, Ugo T, um, I had those two gentlemen I found on Instagram who one was born with no, both, he didn't have both his feet, uh, both his legs and he didn't have an arm. But when I'm looking at his lifestyle, I'm like, how? Same as the other guys got both his arms and no, he doesn't have both his legs, but he's so strong that that guy would definitely beat you up on man. And I'm just like, how? So I realized that, you know, I'm, I'm crying over something so small, an ankle bone. And I did announce that once on Instagram, once guys, sometimes whatever you're going through, just know that someone is going through worse. So as much as I was attempting suicide because I have an ankle bone and scars, imagine that you are not visible right now. I'm like, I wanted to end my life because of that. Instead of me appreciating my survival and believing that there's going to be a way forward, that actually 
what I'm seeing right now, aside from me having tattoos to cover my scars and like, uh, you know, pushing myself to manage to walk again. Let's say I was in a wheelchair. There's still, you must be grateful, Guti, you are still here today. People fail to be grateful, Guti, we are still here today. You know, I would fail to do that. I was against this. I was like, it felt like punishment, you know? Mm. It felt like punishment. And with it feeling like punishment, I just felt like, Guti, you know what? Let me rather, let me rather end my life and just put myself into peace. I, me ending my life was me putting myself into peace. That's why this, that was the plan. I felt like I needed peace because that journey wasn't, it wasn't easy. How would you advise anybody that's watching right now? Young person, elderly person, male, female, who might be going through suicidal thoughts? You know, with suicide, I always say one thing, Guti, there will never be a person aside from you to tell you not to do it, to make you believe that it's not worth doing, you know, because we are so chained into what we want to do. I don't know why it's so traumatic, but um, one thing which I realized, because I did not believe, you know, like I had from my best friend to my mom, beautiful words, people were pushing me every day and I was sitting there saying this is my last day with you you know but one thing that changed me from attempting it three times i got to realize Uguti, you know what the one thing you need to be grateful for is being alive and whatever you are facing actually just know that there's a solution you must just it's all in your mindset so there's actually one thing because my recovery was my mindset i just had to switch my mindset into Stop thinking, Uguti Spashley, this is the end for you. You'll never be anything. Because people used to say horrible things to me. And I look at them today, I'm like, look at Serious? you. Serious? Yes, you see. This is after the you. accident. Yes. Friends. Uh, even, okay. You think you have best friends until you're at your lowest. But from friends to even family members, you know, where people say the worst. And then those things even fuel you up to see that there's actually no direction, there's nothing, you are nothing. You know, I used to say I'm nothing. And for you to actually be on that mindset, you are going to want to commit suicide. I know there are so many of us who feel like we are nothing, who feel like there's no direction, who want to uh, um, attempt suicide. I've had a lot of DMs of people who've tried some, you know, they want to, but not everyone will have the strength to do it, you know, because it's not an easy thing to do to damage yourself. But it's a whole thing. One thing I believe in is mindset. That all you need to do is whatever you're going through, no matter how small or big it is, just believe, change your mindset and say that you will overcome this. If you say you'll overcome this, you'll be so surprised. That's what I've been doing overcoming everything I didn't think I'll overcome. I mean, I didn't think I'll wear heels ever again. You are walked in here today wearing mm. my heels, mm. you know? Mm. And um, I was so sad because I had the most perfect nose ever. And- I had the most perfect nose No, ever. My, 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 the nose I had was the one people would go to Turkey for, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, it got damaged to a point where I would look at the pictures, I look at me in the mirror. I used to do this, like I was standing on the mirror, I would look. So that was also with me wanting to assume suicide. So I, like, I look at my pictures, I look in the mirror, I look in the picture, I look in the mirror, and I was like, mm -mm. Mm -mm. I don't like this person, you know. So again, with me not liking this person, like how I should be grateful that I'm alive today, I felt like it was punishment. So again, Aside from, because it's simple for me, you know, I did uh, my uh, non-surgical nose job. So with someone who doesn't have the finance to do that, it's, so I didn't think I was actually going to do it because my doctors, I thought I was going to do the surgical nose job and they said I have to remove all the metals that are inside. And I was like, I'm not about to cut my face to remove metals just to do a nose job, you know? So I accepted myself, but luckily after a year of accepting myself, Skin Renewal just offers to do that to me. It comes in all directions, eh? Because I didn't ask for it. They just were like, boom. And I, 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 at first I was like, you know, I was so scared when they told me, imagine, I should have been the happiest girl. They're like, it's what you can do. And I said, 
Mm-mm. You know, because I've <laughs> and I <laughs> and I said no because I've accepted. You know, when you've accepted, you go say to this was you. So now, with skin renewal coming to me, Betty, no, we can do it. It's non-surgical, even worse because the surgical one, I have to remove metals, but it's non-surgical. Gati, Gati, I said no. For a whole month, I said no. Yes, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I thought about it for a month, but after thinking, Ngati, actually, I know, Guti, my prayer is answered. I must just say yes, you know, because we always want our prayers to be answered. But now my prayer is answered, and yeah, I am saying no. Yeah. So, you know, I was saying, I said no for a full month. Otherwise, this was going to be me like in September. Yeah. But um, it's simple things. If you don't have the finance to, you know, get yourself your own non-surgical nose job, things like that, accept, because I accepted myself. So now with someone giving me a solution to what I've accepted, kind of feels kind of offensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but um, it's a thing. Where, what I'll say to a person was whatever you're going through, if you can't change it, accept it. And But now with you accepting it, Love yourself so much that we don't see Uguti what you are going through because that's the thing with me. My life is just too beautiful, too clean. Uguti, you won't see Uguti Splash as what girl. You know, you, I'm walking in hills. You won't say Uguti, that's the girl who doesn't have an ankle bone, who's wearing a moon boot. I train so hard. You know, Uguti, I have a moon boot and that most of my joints and my bones are sensitive. You know, it's a whole thing, Uguti, accepting and changing your mindset. Man, my mindset is taking me from that person I was. To the person I am today, and I'm not done. There's still a way forward. That is such an inspiring story. Mm-hmm. Um, have you, <clears throat> excuse me, and this is very sensitive, that's why I'm very, cho- I'm choosing my words very carefully because I can only imagine people who are watching it and they're going through their own, you know, their own. And a lot of people are going through it. I get so many messages, but it gets to a point where. I've answered a lot, uh, except one person I spoke to who didn't make it. Um, but with everyone else, they're still updating me. We see how far they, you know, they've gone and everything. And I look at it, I'm just like, it's not only me. There are people who are actually making it. It's not just me. So there are people I've inspired to make it. People I've spoken to, if I just go to, hey, there's a way forward. And they believe that. So right now, I feel like there's a lot of... Um, Suicide attempt, the suicide attempt rate is very high right now, and I just would love people to change their mindsets because I also had no solutions. I had no solutions, but I just decided because you know what, the biggest answer is I'm la, and Unkurunkura no Guti, he'll be next to me. I just always believe that Guti is next to me when things are looking impossible. I'm just like God is next to me, and I'm even when I went to the ocean, my, when my doctor told me not to, and I was like, hmm. You know, <laughs> I'm like, God is with me. <laughs> and I'm alive. How do you change your mindset? Or how did you do it? How I did it. I read a book. and How I, read... I did it? Same. So, so sorry, before you yes. continue. Oh, let me not tell you what, what, what I did to change my mindset. No, and tell me. How I continuously no, do it. Me, but I do it through different things. Yeah. So through affirmations, through reading, mm. through listening to different podcasts that are, you know, yes. personal developing me, through um, watching content that empowers me. And just through um, following on social media, people and platforms that encourage and inspire me, you know? That's exactly me. You just answered yourself. Except for the podcast part. I was mm. always uh, like in research on Instagram. Like I used to, at least now I've got Wi-Fi and I'm a fiber, so I don't waste money on data. But like I was telling you earlier, with the money on data is just expensive. Yeah, data but is expensive in South to, Africa, guys. Guys, the data is expensive. I feel like I'm almost like Megan J. In 2019, <laughs> I'm almost like Megan, that I spent on with, with data alone. I feel like that's worth the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? But I used to always be researching and also hashtags and everything. And you meet different people. And either way, it's like, sometimes it's like, what you think, you kind of bring it to life because on Explore, I happened, I didn't have to search much. I found everyone who inspired me on Explore. It's beautiful because As you social it, media gives you more of yes. what you usually consume. Yes. So if on your Explore, you're finding more of inspirational people, it means 
so you are today, literally following a lot of inspirational the platforms. Was, the last was so beautiful. To our point to it, actually, I'm going to take a screenshot of everyone and put it together for people and, and take them for people to go see that. So if it's anyone who's in any physical condition, I'll be like, guys, I am nothing compared to these people, but look at them and look at me. You know, they are just, I look at their lives, I'm like, how are they doing it all today? And it's a kind of journey. Like that guy, he has no legs, he's got only one arm and he's got the most beautiful, beautiful, strongest, like I'm not even strong. She's strong, she's so beautiful. And they are living life so beautifully. And getting, if that's the case, because me and Avery, I'm just scared of love loves here, you know. But I'm like looking at him, I'm like, I wonder what he would have possibly thought. Because me and I, because of my ankle bone, I'm like, I won't find a husband who will love me and accept me as I am. But I'm like, he found a woman at the status ads and he's so happy. They are happy, actually. I'm like, and I look at them, as much as I'm still scared, I'm just like, ah. We'll be surprised. Maybe special will be. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. That's how you worked on your mindset. Yeah, so it was the book, content. but the book, that's the book I'm reading. I've actually. What book is that? It's, um, it's Manifest Now. So you have to manifest things. <laughs> La Lela, I've read that you book. Have to manifest things. 2019, 2020, right now, I'm actually on page 100. Up. So, so I'm still going to cook because it's long. And that's the thing, we rereading the book is so nice because it basically tells you how to think, mm. how to operate, how to do everything. Like, not that it's saying, no, do this. No, wake up in the morning and drink tea. No, but the way they are talking, it makes you actually want to take action differently. Like, everything you do is not going to be the same. Mm -hmm. That's why I keep rereading it because I feel like, um, when you take time and you just like, you, there'll never be a time where you're like, oh, I'm 100% okay now, no. But that, those words, I've reread them to a point to which I even spoke, like, oh, I spoke to the lady uh, who owns that book, because when I, I decided to stop attempting suicide, that was the first book I got, and it changed my life so much. The way I looked at things, I was so happy, you know, everything of mine was perfect. And I decided to talk to the author, and I was telling her my whole life story. I was surprised that she answered and she was actually in full communication with me. Um, oh, you, you slid into her full, DMs. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. And she answered. I think was, I, when I slid in, I was telling her with how a book, you know, and everything, blah, blah, blah. And we were just fully talking. And, and even with moments where I'll start being emotional again, because it's the thing where you have moments where you're emotional again, where you're like, oh, things are so hard. And I'm having, because the thing is, suicidal thoughts will never go away. That's what I've realized. It's been four years, and they will keep attacking you. You'll be chilling, watching TV, boom. It will literally tell you how to do it. That's how bad it is you, literally everything i've done i've always been it's like the someone giving you direction of how to kill yourself Yo, not that's good. the devil eh they so do the, it. that's the devil like yeah. the last one i had because i've never had a therapist with my whole recovery the last uh one i had which was last year in october <laughs> it was so bad to a point to google and they're like, no, must make a booking. That's I'll be dead by the time I make the booking. Don't say that. No, because no, the thought was so heavy and it attacked me so many times in one day. Mm. I say, I'll be dead by the time uh, my appointment is made. I say, I need someone to talk to me now. And they spoke to me telephonically for an hour and it actually, I felt so much better speaking about it and telling them everything. And they now officially started seeing them weekly afterwards and you know it did help and then i saw them for months even now that i'm staying in Joburg, you know i've got a therapist oh you're in Joburg? yes i mean i thought you stay in durban oh not new york <laughs> <laughs> oh wow you're in Joburg. okay yeah okay. so i've got a therapist here and i see her as well because sometimes you just need to speak it out you know speak it out speak it out and I feel so much better, but I don't have, uh, this year I haven't had uh, suicidal thoughts, no. I've just been like normal emotional, you know. But um, the last one I had, which was crazy, because that one, if I had to give you details of it, it was unbelievable. I knew that I'm not going to make it. I was like, mm -mm, I don't want to, because I've given a promise to God that I'll never attempt suicide again. So I said, so when that came, I said, mm -mm. so because that's the thing, the fact that I believe so much in God that when those thoughts come, I'm like, 
Mm-mm, no, like literally, that's me. He said, no, 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 no. But when he gets so bad, he's attacking you so many times in one day. That's when I had to call the therapist, say, talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. So if I bump into anyone on social media who happens to look like they are, or who communicates like they are having suicidal thoughts, what must I say to them to sort of try and help them? Be- because they were there for you. Yeah. The therapist people that you called and you wanted somebody to speak to at that time immediately. And they spoke to you and you didn't go ahead with it. Clearly they changed your, they helped you. They saved your life. They actually, one thing I've realized with therapists is that they don't really tell you what to not do. They basically, you speak out what you're going through. And even before then, before, because I never had therapists before, I used to be that person, because I was embarrassed mm. to tell anyone what I'm going through, you know? I was like, Mm-mm, I'm not telling anyone, not even friends, not even family, nothing. I used to go to, you know, Abu Kala, Abu Sim Kalkoeni. I'll be out there, I'll buy them the Nandozi, and I'll make sure I have at least you know, 100 rand, 200 rand to give him just to sit down. And I'll obviously probably give him a few ciders also and a bag just for him to sit down. I'll, I'll remain in my car because obviously I had metals. And then I'll speak to him by the window while he's sitting down, eating, drinking, and I'll be telling him my story. So I used to speak out and I'll tell him, tell him. After speaking out, I used to feel so much better. So I realized, you see, I basically, that was my form of therapy because I literally, in Durban, I spoke to a lot of them randomly and i knew good to me speaking out not a more do not know believe if they had to tell the next person that's why i didn't want to tell my friend or family because obviously you believe what they what they telling you about me but me having a therapist today is basically me again speaking out to a person who i'm gonna see on a regular who knows my whole story that's the only difference so I feel like people are always going through so much and with them going through a lot, they always decide to and keep everything and, and play like everything is good, can't they? It's actually the best thing to do is anyone you endeavors, like tell them what's bothering you, even cry if you have to, and then just take a sip afterwards. <laughs> Wow, guys, you know, I always say to people must write books, like you must write a book. By the way, have you started? Have you, are you writing a book? I thought of it, but I couldn't because I, I, I thought of uh, asking that author, but obviously she's such a busy person with so many books. Uh, and she's such a good author. Actually, I'm going to show you her book so you, okay. you can even display it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. You'll display yours. <laughs> no, I mean, the next interview. No, yeah, but you that book. What book was that book? Manifesting. Anyone, go away now. You manifesting what, Gwanja? Manifest now. Manifest now. Okay. Yes, go away now. You love that book. Okay. Like I've re I've reread it four times. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, and I'm still gonna continue. I'll never give up. But um, yeah, it's just it's just like so much where I will say woman to tea whatever you're going through don't keep it to yourself because I speak I always speak to my mom and my aunt my mom's sister them too and my best friends um two of my best friends and I tell them details so now as much as I'm telling them also sometimes I'm just like Mm-mm. I think my therapist because of the way they ask you they're like but how does it make you feel now with your friend? You know, someone who knows you won't be like, tell you, it's, ah, ah. they'll be like, how does it make you feel type of thing? You know, they'll listen to you and be like, no friend, it's will get better. I'm just like, uh. <laughs> but now the therapist is, that's the different part about us where they actually make you question yourself. Yeah. That's the beautiful part about it. So I never used to believe in therapists, but they basically are people who make you speak out your problems and make you question yourself, how you feel, question how you feel. Because the way they ask you questions, you get to realize, I, that's what I always realize, because hmm, I'm basically a fisherman, Jill, fish. Mm, mm, <laughs> mm. Oh, that's the last thing she said. Mm, mm, <laughs> yeah, mm. but yeah. Because you're caring, right, sometimes yeah, as a human being. And that's the thing, I'm so caring. You know, because you know, you show uh, my therapist, says he, but you are so caring. Eti we na jobi fishermen. E mani fage i i net u cast e bongo fish aba geno bi net. Ino guti u choose guti law. Ilo ngufu na yo law zungu sebenzi. Tuasa sa yonke dogan. You can't have 
everything. Then something else not every, not, baggage, not right? everything is you. Yeah, that's the thing. Which is you know, must say it clear. It's like must say do make clear. Or but must understand. Or any situation that you're not understanding, you must realize you see you actually put yourself through it. When you go through the most, some people might be there, but it's like somebody goes to prison or. People see Vinyana for a few weeks or months and then they never come anymore. It's not, it's yeah. not like I've been in prison. I watch movies. <laughs> yeah, the way, the way you say it, I'm like... <laughs> well, I visit prisons. I mean, I've visited so many prisons. I speak. So I always go to prisons and, and give talks, etc. But I mean, also speaking to inmates, I'll tell you. People visit you in the beginning, in the beginning, in the beginning, a few, a few weeks or maybe a few months and then they don't come no more. Um, Which is people true. That's what, even I, that's what I also feel with my recovery where before Osbache was the ego, you know, I had so many friends and so many people who cared and called me every day, you know. But when you are in that situation, you realize, Uguti, they're not even checking, never mind the fact that you're calling me or whatever, but fine, I'm out of hospital and realize that, okay, I used to know you and here we are following each other on Instagram. How is it that you actually haven't checked up for me to check what how is she doing? You know, and people don't care. I realize a, the next person will always care for the next person. So a point is they ask us, how is she doing? Like as much as we're not best mm-hmm. friends or close friends like that, but it's just reaching out. You know, sometimes reaching out to a person who's not your best friend or you're not that close to, but it means something because I know I've had people who do that to me and I'm like, oh, that's so sweet, you know, and I know I'll probably speak to you months later or maybe next day, it doesn't matter, but you thought of me, you know, and it's the same thing. It's like things like that make me take the same action where I'm like, how it made me feel, I would want someone else to feel like that, mm. you know, but now it becomes so hard where, like people, I'm just like, there are people I know, mind you, when I bump into you wherever publicly, now we have to hug and say hi, I'm just like, rolling mm. my eyes but it's nothing personal I'm just like I just feel like people don't care doesn't hurt you though so, no no it, it did before but I've just got into a point where uh, mm. you don't care and I don't care about you caring life moves on yeah mm. Mm. your story is amazing it's a song your story is totally 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 I wish amazing. I could write a book no you have to and, and books, you write it differently. Sometimes you don't have to physically write. Uh, as a person like you, sometimes... I've thought of it, like I've gone through so much where I'm thinking book, but I'm like, I know myself, I don't like reading books. I think Manifest Now is just that one book which I happen to read. and it, Yeah. Because I also happen to find a book on Explore. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, I even thought of things in it. Maybe uh, there are things I want to do, like consulting. I wish I could actually sit down with people maybe let's say it's a room full of us and then you speak out your problem you speak because it's an angel thing you need to speak it out oh because it's an i can assist you with your problem i can assist you i don't have solutions you know but it's a whole thing you must find a solution you must your mindset you must change and look for a solution because now me i didn't have solutions but i was like i would sit there with my with my diary and i'd be like Thinking, I was and literally, I'll sit and think. I'll even like go suntan. I would, you know, like I'll do stupid things just so I can get myself to think. You say, hmm, what should I do? What would work? And then you start writing ideas down, writing ideas. Like I've got in all the books from the time when I left hospital, when what I did today, I wouldn't remember tomorrow. I had a diary where I would write down it before I sleep. Everything I did. So when I wake up tomorrow, I read what I did, who I call, so no, I won't call them again. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. I still have all those books. Like, you know, things which also me, I think I'm, I'm still, like one day I'll let go and actually decide it's okay, you know what? Let me draw away, whatever. But right now, those things, I even have my scans, everything. I even mm-hmm. have, it's about <laughs> the papers and everything that I've got this much papers which are saying everything that was ever done to Spatia in hospital this much. Mm-hmm. We see this operation, this was what, this, this is. And that's the thing we see, as much as I'm not reading them, but that's how I survived. So it means something to me and I care, I won't throw anything away. I know I'm gonna go design a box where I'm gonna put everything inside. I still even have the um, metals and everything, even my, 
my metals that I had, I still have them where I'm just like, I wish I could actually display it because, you know, someone will be like, why would you want to look at that every day? I made it through that, you know, even the car, I still have pictures of my car and it's a beautiful car. And surprisingly, when I was getting a car last year, I wanted to make it the same color and I was like, Spashi, stop it. <laughs> yeah, move on. <laughs> move on. So that's the thing. It's so hard to move on. So as much as I've moved on from a few things. There are so many things that I'm still holding into, mm. you know, like yeah. that car, I still look at it. So I'm just like, ah, and the one thing with me, it's only my mom's cars where I've driven um, the non-SUV cars. But before I was always like, cause that car was not an SUV. So I was always scared to get into cars like that even. And I was like, hmm, cause it would kind of bring like memories, memories of my car, yeah. not of the accident of I my car, you, you know, when you, you just miss something so much where, I guess so, the fact that I even want the same car color, you know, and my couch is the same car color, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so I'm still holding on to it. I'm not, because as much as it's an emotional thing and you want to let it go, but you must, I will never forget to this was it and forget the whole journey because it changed me. I'm, if it wasn't for that car accident, I wouldn't be possibly the person I am today, yeah. you know, but it changed me and I'm, I'm happy with the person I am. I love myself and I'm just here to say what I do. Look, it's possible. It's possible. And you're stunning. You've done a great job, so <laughs> Thank and, you. and let's give props to some of the companies that were there mm. and that you, that you work with, even some endorsements. I Maybe let, let's shout them out. Let's even name drop. I don't mind. I know. Like I was with... Um, you spoke about Skin Renewal earlier. Skin Renewal, yes. I, I met them last year and then... Um, I've been with Native Child for Native Child. Native Child for That's my a black-owned hair. company, right? Yes. Big up to Native Child. <laughs> <laughs> I've been with them for two years. My cool and cool and cool and my guand and cool and cool and busses. My cool business. My ways are my million. My ways are my billion. Yeah, and you're 40. So that's Native Child. Child uh, Huawei, you know, they've been with me since 2019. You know? Sure. Guys, it's Huawei. <laughs> Guys, it's Huawei. Not like me, I used to pronounce it highway. It's Huawei. <laughs> hey, Shout out to Huawei. Level, level pronunciation. <laughs> Um, and Puma, actually, if anything, I'll, I'll, is it to Puma. 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 <laughs> so, it, so it's Puma. Puma. Okay. So the Puma was with them before my accident, and it was so nice of them. How when I left hospital, they were still sending me um, uh, like their outfits, you know, for me to wear, and it was beautiful. I loved it. I was like, oh my god, but uh, they're still acknowledging me, you know. And it went on, you know, for the whole of 2019, and then obviously. It, I was, my wheelchair was just, I was in my wheelchair for too long. Yeah. So it died out, yeah. but they were there for the, you know, there for me through, through, through and through, and through. From, yeah. from that time. And I was, I'll be there in my wheelchair, getting dressed, yeah. posing, <laughs> yeah. you know, it was nice. It was so nice. And yeah, so I've, yeah, I've had them. And then I had one gig, I just, um, I forgot the name. They were, that was in 2019 with my memory. I forgot the, the name of the place, but yeah, it was a Cubana though. And then we went there and I was there in my wheelchair, oh, yeah. <laughs> dancing, and I was there for the whole weekend. So that was the first um, uh, gig I went to. So I was like, ah, you know, cause when you believe like you will never be that person to ever li- relive that life again, I was surprised to be in my wheelchair and me and Cubana is a good one. It was such a good one. But when I was so busy, everyone, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. But yeah, so I've I've been happy. I've had um, a lot of people who've supported me, who've seen something in me, and who are still with me also, which mm. is beautiful. The brighter side of things. Now let's talk about um, the lighter side of things before we wrap up the interview. I didn't see much of you on the reality show, on the Mamkeys reality show. <laughs> Again, me, I was, my mom would be like, I'm like, no, mom, mom was always asking me, even with traveling, mom always travels. And she's like, Spatia, I'm like, no. I'm, I feel like I'm always, no. <laughs> and she'd be like, Spatia, says shooter, no. <laughs> Why not, though? I don't know. I think it's like one of those things where, like when this camera here, I feel like it's not, for me, I just feel like, I won't be myself. Okay. You know, because I know with this camera, so I'm going to want to, smile more 
to sit up straight. I, I won't. I, I won't be myself. So I'm, I'm always avoiding those things. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I was well at the time. I was, and also me being in my situation, I wasn't confident with myself. Okay. So I was. I was just like. Uh, 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 I, I was just not. I don't want to be part of it because okay. I was just not happy. But at the same time. I was always there in the background, like, don't record me. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> obviously I want to see everything that was going on. Uh, and my mom understood, which was good. And yeah. So even with traveling, because mom's always traveling, but mom is always looking too beautiful. I'm like, mom, there's so much pressure. You know, now I must also make sure we see, it's okay, Islam, J must be on tick. <laughs> yeah. For the what? <laughs> So I'm traveling now and, and I'm doing a lot of uh, gigs in the uh, tour. I'm touring the US. I'm doing a lot of shows there. And then obviously I follow your, your moms on social media. I realize they are also in the US. And I'm actually here at home for a few days. I'm actually going back on Friday. Yeah. Um, to, I'm actually going to Connecticut, then New York, and then Miami, and et cetera, et cetera. Why didn't you go with them to the US? Because we were in Dubai a few days oh, before. Us. No, not a week. Not Dubai. weeks before. <laughs> a few days before. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I was like, also for me, I do influential work. So I'm always, uh, you know, I have to be active a lot here. So I can't be traveling a week off. I'm in Dubai now, another week to two weeks in US. So it just doesn't work because I need to be here in Joburg taking content posting like for my campaigns i'm you know i'm with native child i'm with skin renewal you know so shout out to native child shout out to skin renewal i guess ordinary people like us i was probably like i said i wouldn't have to work why do you have to work when your parents are already well when your family is already wealthy though uh, you see, just show too. it was a circle also seen so yeah. mind you, we must make sure we see. And besides that, I think what I love doing the most is taking good care of myself. You know, uh, from finance to physically everything of mine. Because at the end, Zali, she's looking at me and she's proud of me, and that's all that matters. You know. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, I can't buy a, a gift that. Yeah. Well, we, more, more with you, what gift do you buy? <laughs> what gift do you buy for your mother, though? <laughs> She's got everything. Roses. <laughs> roses, yes. Roses. There's a trick, guys. What gift do you buy somebody who's got everything? Roses. Exactly. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, even, yeah, shame. That's what I do. And, but, you know, as that's what it's a thing, Ogut, you must make our parents proud, you know, so it mustn't be a thing where we are depending on them because. It's a whole thing you go to. Oh, mama sing a second, so karaganja. You know, so yeah. I'm just pushing, pushing, pushing. I'm like, no, ma, go to US and me. I need to go take the pictures. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need to go do my facial. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, and everything. But I wish I was in US, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but I had to pick and choose. Visit New York, guys. I know your mom's is in the new the US. Well, I've got the visa. <laughs> oh, you got the visa. <laughs> <Your> visa. <laughs> and 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 I just want to appreciate you for being for having that heart to want to inspire when I went down. It's not a lot of people who are so blessed to be in our position where um, we want. There's other people who are so blessed, and then we just want to brag to everybody else. Yeah. Is what I have is how I'm living. But, but it's not a lot of people who are. Who, who really want to inspire Abanya Bantuan. And mm -hmm. for me, I, I see that through you. So I don't want to go in the law. Thank you. Cousin mm -hmm. Jay, I just, everything of mine is just nice and simple. Like basically almost as everyone can relate to me, you yeah. know, which is good. And we all speak the same language. So, you know, we, we, what I'm saying is something that kind of 80% of my followers can also do. Yeah. You know, and right now I even want to be more open where I'm just, because I just, I, well, this week I decided to open a, a TikTok account and I'm just like... Oh, you're on TikTok now? Yeah. Oh, well, there's TikTok. a ghost account which has like over 100,000 followers. And what's the ghost account? It's... Spate underscore Pisani. Yes. Yours is, the new one is... No, it's Spate underscore... Okay, let, let, let's start with the, the ghost account is... Spate underscore Pisani. It's got 100... And that's not you. And it takes everything I post on Instagram. And, and they post it. And yeah. they but post that's it. not you. That's not okay. me. Okay, which one is yours? The one that's mine is Spatle underscore FB underscore Bisani. So oh, Spatle okay. Fitness Bunny 
Pisani. Okay. And then what if this Bahia underscore and Pisani people are willing to take that account and give it to you? No, I they I, I spoke to them first and I said, uh and nothing I else. Oh you tried to speak to them? I did because I was like it's, you know, it means they're your fans. It besides you. local, there's a campaign. And it's right? not like Bakuma Listen, Mahala, it was a campaign I needed, which was a good one. Oh, then but they I didn't have TikTok. That no, I didn't have TikTok. So I was yeah. like, Ghost the house. Ghost in another show. Later, uh, yeah, but team. <laughs> and then they just never replied. They refused. No, no okay, they never what? replied. But either way, I don't want it. So I will start you don't afraid. want it. No, get it. Got over 100,000 followers. No, but the thing is, they don't want it's to give true. it to me, obviously. Yeah, but what if after watching I'm going to have to tell people. Everyone who's watching my Jogo team, they must just go report it so I can get. You don't have to report it because they're your fans. Back turned. Can Yashu have they, re- no, have Yashu's they... the ghost account? So you yeah. can because they're not the person is not willing to give it to me. Yeah. So but have they posted anything malicious? No. No. They're just posted. So they're your fans, they love your work. No, Yashu, no, I get that. Yeah. But in Yashu Guti, I've got my one. So now it's gonna interfere with Guti. Which one is the one? Because on the one on my TikTok, I won't be posting what I'm posting on Instagram. I get you, yeah. So my but, but I'm saying, what if they're watching this and then they're interested to give it back to you? Maybe now after watching this, um, the same company they're working to even sell it to you. I mean, I'll pay for it. I wouldn't mind. Yes. Would you pay for it? I was going to go No, I'm saying for the account. <laughs> you, no, no, not you. I mean, I don't have money. I'm just, <laughs> I was asking them to sell him for coin. I sell in the streets. <laughs> Are you willing to pay for it? Yes. The, she's willing to pay for it, gentlemen. <laughs> and, and, and I would buy it. Because I can see this person has been posting malicious no, but you, stuff. You keep, my wait, fan. Wait, 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 so when you're saying you would buy it, and you buy it No, no I'm saying, no, you are buying it from them. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. no, no, no. I'm saying you buy it from them. Uh, they sell it to you. Okay. Yeah, What's okay. the highest you're willing to pay for it? I don't know, but now if you if it was an account with hundred thousand with a hundred thousand followers, me I would pay. I would offer them ten thousand rands. Okay, yeah. I would offer them ten thousand, yeah, and How I would negotiate from there. T- okay. I know it's a lot of money, but I wouldn't mind to pay ten thousand rands okay. for an account in a hundred thousand followers. Okay, 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 okay. So kuru mungu But yeah, hundred. <laughs> 100k followers is worth 10,000. Right? I'm not saying it's worth that. I'm saying that's where I would start to negotiate. Yeah, okay. To say, yeah, guys, yeah. I'm willing to pay 10,000 rands. You guys give me the login details, the passwords, everything. That's my okay, 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 yeah, okay. come to my side. I'll be happy. I'll be yeah. happy. Okay. And then I'll have a relationship with you guys. You know, you know what I mean? On top of that, we'll be friends afterwards. You know, and then you guys can start a new guys, one. Get, yeah. get guys, maybe you know, you, you never know. You never know. You know what I mean? At yeah. least it might won't be 10K, but yeah. I won't mind. Yes. Because, I mean, I need TikTok. Yeah, we do. And it's my, I, I need it. And yeah, for, we especially do. me as an influencer. So, so, yeah. Yeah, we're doing also if the person has a heart, they would actually communicate. They know my email anyway, but they do. Man, you hurt man, I'm wrong, la lel. Wrong, la lel, you hurt man. What's up, what's up, what's up, dear man? You hurt man, you hurt man. You ring in the buffet too. Can you just stay account here, hello? You negotiate in Kala go ten steena, and then there's over his scheme, and who knows what's going to happen out of your relationship? And it doesn't mean you stop what you're doing. She probably can. You know, you probably take what she's just opened and move on with it as a, you know, fan account. And I'm not saying you guys are her fans, but I like the fact that you've been supporting her work because you guys have not posted anything malicious. Yes, so yes. let's see what happens. Let Unkulunkulu um do his job. Right. <laughs> Thank you for the amazing inspiration that you guys have been. And and I want to say this. I mean, I'm a father of a daughter, right? Mm. And uh. Every time when I see a sister, a young girl, an older lady or whatever it is, I'm just always seeing my daughter in all these different ladies, girls, women that I see all the time. I see my daughter in you. My daughter's gonna watch this video like, I don't know how many years from today, she's nine now. She's gonna watch this video, I don't know how many years from today. But at some point she'll be your age, right? That's what I always think. My daughter will be, what will my daughter say about me when she is at Sibakhe's age? What is it that I'm doing right now but I would like my daughter to be proud about mm. type of things, you know? Yes. So I just want to appreciate people like you because I know that currently as she is, as a younger girl, a nine-year-old, just like a lot of us as parents, our kids are looking up to you guys. So people like you 
and me being selective because I, I wouldn't want my daughter to, you know, be inspired by everybody. Mm -hmm. But there's just certain people that I, I'm like, okay, I'm proud that my daughter is watching certain people. So my daughter watches your content. That's why I'm in Shoganja. Continue being an inspiration and um, help as many people as you can and continue yeah. to grow. Thank you so Thank much for you. giving us your time today. Thank you so much. And yeah. I'm happy to meet you. I can't believe we're meeting for the first time. I know. <laughs> guys, social media is, is like so, ah, guys. But anyway, it's so great. I appreciate you. And lastly, I would like for you to speak as we wrap it up to the people out there because this has been an inspirational interview. And I think you'll use that camera. Uba Valelis and Uba Kutaza, people are going through a lot, guys, you know? Guys, you know, me being here today, I was nervous, but I was like, so I just want to say, Uguti, thank you, Sku, for the invite. And I'm happy Uguti, I was opening up to you guys. Uguti is in instead of us always wanting to give up, because that was me. I was that person, but I've overcome that, you know, I've become a better person. And I'm just here to say, Uguti, it's all about your mindset. You know, even on my Instagram, I've got under, under highlights, there's a highlight saying hashtag manifest now. So please go read like that alone, you know, would also assist to make you change with how you really look at everything you're doing at yourself, not at everything you're doing, how you really look at yourself, you know, because your mindset is so powerful. Your mindset becomes your reality. So it's with everything, with how you speak, how you act, the things you do, those are all things you've manifested if you are actually going through the worst right now and you're not overcoming it is because you are focusing so much on your negative thoughts you are not looking at the light with corner in light so one thing i say Uguti, rethink stop thinking so negatively love yourself and whatever you are going through today just know that you are in a better situation. There's someone out there who's going through worse and they are happy today. I'm happy today, you know? We can all be happy. So please love yourself, take things nice and slowly and just know, Guti, your prayers won't be answered today. They might not be answered today. My prayers got answered three years later and I had to wait for three years. And so, so funny because I always said, I always continued, Guti, yes. I manifested that for a full three year and I never gave up as much as I would cry. I'll still cry, obviously, but see, oh, this thing still year two, I don't have it. But three years later, I'm like, look at me now, you know, so I'm a happy girl. Your mindset is powerful. Mm. Love yourself, guys. And thank you for listening. We love you. And then lastly, you are speaking to yourself exactly 11 years from today. You'll be getting into my department now. You'll be 40. <laughs> You'll be getting into my department. And I'm going to send you this video. A decade from today, I'm going to send you this video to an older smartly, a 40-year-old mm. smartly. What would you like to say to that amazing sister? Smartly, you've gone through a lot. You know, you've gone through a lot. And I know with you, you're not a person to give up. So where you are today is where you manifested yourself to be. So I just want to say to you, well done. I'm proud of you. Keep pushing. And I know that you will never give up. Nothing is going to slow you down. I love you. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank you. Appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Love you so much, guys. We'll see you soon on the next video. God bless you.